Hey, good afternoon, guys. Um, <clears throat> been a while since I've uh, had a chance to post anything to the uh, channel. And uh, in the midst of doing a massive um, organization um, project here with my cards, trying to really get myself organized, not just, you know, take care of a couple of stacks here and there, but but uh, really get myself organized with new boxes and an organizing system and all sorts of stuff and and just finally getting off my my duff so to speak and uh, taking care of a few things but um, in, in the middle of doing that I'm sitting here I'm listing uh, cards on trading card database both in my collection as well as cards for trade and um, updating trades uh, cataloging cards all that kind of good stuff and I thought you know what that would be a good time to, to kind of just share some of the highlights of some things that I've gotten through trades or that have come <clears throat> you know through through purchases or whatnot um, and we'll start off with a trading card database trade guys if you're not using this website you, you're, you're missing out um, there it's it's a valuable resource just in general but uh, there's also a lot of great people on there that will be more than willing to help you out with your want lists, whether you're a set builder, a player collector, team collector, whatever. Um, so I just recently completed a trade with the user Motorcat. And uh, he uh, lives up in the Raleigh-Durham area of North Carolina and offered to send me a set of uh, NC State basketball cards in for like one or two cards <clears throat> that uh, that uh, he, he had asked for. And I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was in the set. I didn't know how many cards it was. It finally came, and I'm very, very happy with it. These regional card sets... Um, oops, sorry. Yeah, these regional card sets are, are super nice. And uh, obviously they're not all that easy to come by these days but um, this is from 1989-90 and you see their corporate pro uh, sponsors at that time were Hardee's and IBM as well as a local radio station but uh, first card we got is uh, Chris Corciani, who, uh, man, he led the ACC in the assists for a number of years before eventually it was broken by. I can't remember now off the top of my head. But anyhow, uh, Chris had a uh, short NBA uh, season He uh, or career. He was drafted by the... Celtics and had a short career there about three years give or take Kay Gal women's head coach and we've got the mascots the Wolves Roland Whitley Jimmy V never give up love getting cards of him Kevin Thompson here's another player I followed for um, through his college career, he ended up playing um, several years at NC State before going on and being drafted by the Portland Trailblazers. And again, like Corciani, only lasted a couple years in the league. Andreas Stenson, really good women's ball uh, ball player. <clears throat> when the Charlotte Hornets had an NBA or WNBA team, the Sting, she played for uh, she played in Charlotte. Rodney Moreau, another good uh, young guard, um, another player I enjoyed watching back in the day. He was drafted by the Atlanta Hawks, but man, he lasted maybe a season, two at the most. Um, but to, I always remember him because his, his rookie was in the um, the inaugural Upper Deck basketball set. Ollie Lester, David Lee. Jamie Knox, Brian Howard, Mickey Hennett, Tom Gugliotta. Loved watching Googs play. Went on to have a really nice NBA career. 
with Minnesota and Phoenix. Brian Feggins, Brian D'Amico. So, good set, fun set. Very happy to get something like that in the mail. Um, being the basketball collector, I was really enjoying the uh, NBA season before the uh, before it, everything got shut down due to the coronavirus. But a uh, couple of couple of guys, or one of the guys that I was really enjoying watching, watching come into a zone, was uh, Cody Martin. Cody Martin <clears throat> was drafted by the Hornets, originally an NC State player. Um, he and his brother, his twin brother, identical twin brother, were um, started at State, but eventually, uh, um, I think after two, two or three years at State, they uh, transferred to Nevada. Um, but Cody was drafted by the Hornets. Caleb, his twin brother, was signed by the Hornets. Um, Cody got more of the playing time than Caleb, but, but when they both got in, they, they played really well. And I think other players or collectors started taking notion because his card started to go up a little bit as the basketball season went on. This one here is from the Panini Instant um, series, kind of like the Tops Now, print on demand. And uh, only sold 156 copies, so it's one I'm glad to, to, to finally finally pick up. And got a couple of uh, here's some of the shinies from uh, Optic. I don't remember what this one's called. It's some kind of pink prism, but you can see it's got a different design from the regular prism. I also picked up an auto from his from that same set of his signature series. It's not numbered. It's a sticker auto, but still nice. Changing gears. I don't do a lot with wrestling anymore. I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, but I don't do a lot with cards anymore with the wrestling cards. I used to build some sets. Um the last set I finished building, or that I'm almost done with, is the 2018 Heritage, WWE Heritage. But one of the guys I've always enjoyed watching, following, is uh, R Truth, or Ron Killings. Uh, he's from my hometown of Charlotte, <clears throat> North Carolina, and uh, he's just uh, he's a cool guy. He's fun. He's he's great on TV. He's great on the mic. I've heard he's really good behind the scenes, you know, other people will love working with them. So I found the same seller had both of these cards. Uh, it's the Money in the Bank series, which ironically enough is the next pay-per-view coming up for them. And uh, I also have this cool green parallel. Whoops. You can see it's number 9 of 99. And uh, so I've got a little PC going of our truth now. It's about about the bulk of what I'll do with basketball or wrestling cards now, but it's kind of fun. All right, now on to baseball. Charlie Clutch. This dude is is awesome. I love watching him play. So so very good <clears throat> when he gets an opportunity to get in the game, um, and I usually end up. While I officially don't have a PC of him, I probably should. Because I always try to pick up parallels and whatnot of him. Because he doesn't have a slew of cards. And this is one of the purple parallels from 2020 Tops. I think this is a Myers store exclusive. I don't have Myers around here in the south. I've been to a Myers store. But but yeah, nice to get a, nice to get a purple parallel. Whoops. <clears throat> and uh, I'm still plugging away at the 95 Pinnacle Museum collection. I've got two more cards. That puts me up to around 30, I think 38%. So still got a long ways to go. I got a Deion Sanders and a Mel Melvin Nieves. So these are beautiful cards in hand. Can't wait to start putting those in a in a binder. And with the baseball season up in, you know, 
not sure what's going to happen with it. Um, there's not, you know, who knows if there'll be a lot of 2020 product, but we got 2020 Don Russ, and boy, Panini went crazy with the parallels this year. These are just three. Um, Max Freed, young pitcher for the Braves, really, really enjoyed watching him, uh, watching him play, come from the bullpen, work his way into the starting rotation. <clears throat> so I got the uh, little. Stars, blue stars, parallel. And then I've got one of these shiny red foil and a blue foil. And I I can't keep track with what's retail exclusive, what's hobby exclusive, what is in what kind of pack, but they're nice cards. Another PC of mine that I've neglected for a long, long time, picking up anything new, is Sam, um, Tim Salmon. And here you can see in this, sealed in this little foil, or this little uh, cellophane pack, we've got a uh, Mother's Cookies from 1994. So this is my first Mother's Cookie card, I believe. So, very cool. Tim Salmon was probably one of my original PCs. Also picked up the uh, a gold on-card auto of his from the awesome. What was that 19? Yeah, 1996 Leaf Signature Series. Man, such such a it's before its time as a set. Remember the new stand at the local mall had packs of these. I never pulled anything good, but I've got the bronze version, so I just need the silver version left to complete that trio. So very happy with that. Also grabbed another on card salmon auto from the Panini Hometown Heroes set from 2013. This is the gold parallel you can see from the border. And it is numbered 2 of 25. This one, I may end up putting it in a, in a one touch. I think it meets my parameters for a one touch. Another insert set I've been working on um, slowly is the 1997 Topps Team Timber. Uh, I, like, I like cards that are different. Whether it be metal, plastic, acetate, wood, whatever. These have these are cool. The front has a glossy finish, which is okay. The backs, however, are not. They're it has that pseudo wood feel. I don't know if it's really wood or not. But it's not covered. So you can see, as I move the card around, you should see kind of like some of the, the wood grain, so to speak, on, in the card. And the other thing is, is it doesn't appear that this is one of those cards where it's cardboard with just the layer on top of like the, the wood grain that they use. I think it's the whole thing is is that you know whatever they call wood but uh, nice car to Frank Thomas but <clears throat> you know, that would be another fun set and keeping with the wooden theme recently started building the splendid splinters set from Fleer from 2003 um, I toyed with the idea of doing a box of this in in one of my breaks and I still may one day. But the last, uh, oh geez, I can't remember now. So many cards in this set were short printed, and these are the wood, and they're all wooden like this. And they're all numbered. So this Miguel Tejada is 227 of 499, and Chipper is 377 of 499. So I've got the base set of the first 90 regular cards. Now I'm working on the uh, short prints. 
another nice one is this card from uh, tw 2004 Fleer Patchworks. This is the Authentic Collection. And uh, for Relic cards or pat Jersey cards, these are really, really nice. First of all, I like the design. I like the strip of fabric that forms the center of the design and then you've got the frayed corners and the three you know with the with the threads hanging out on the white background it's just a nice design altogether. um and then of course this one you've got a nice little patch from his jersey and uh, i believe these were done in tiers so like the lower tiers were higher numbered and then they just had a plain you know white swatch and then you know, I think this is one of the higher tiers because this one is numbered 51 of 100. I toyed with the idea of building this set because they're readily available. And it's just a nice overall design, but uh, ultimately I just decided to stick with the, uh, with the Andrew. And then... Last couple, Panini, I know Panini's not everybody's favorite when it comes to baseball cards, but I like what they've been doing. Um, this is from the 2019 Leather and Lumber ser uh, set, and uh, Not Whole Gang was an ori originally was a um, leaf, if I'm not mistaken, um, and the the wooden picket fence was again kind of like a oh it might have been real wood I, I don't know it they're different than those team team timber cards that i just looked at <clears throat> but the photo was inset in the fence it was really cool these are not bad i, I like what panini's trying i know it you know without the logos we you know people either love them or hate them From the same leather and lumber series, we've got the Power Alley die cuts. And the, this is not like a faux grain or anything, but um, still a nice card. And I've got a McCutcheon belongs to what I call my Faith Faith Brothers collection of Christian athletes. So, and uh, same seller also had this Barry Larkin so I went ahead and picked it up I, I don't think I'm gonna mess with trying to build this set or anything but um, I got a couple of Reds collectors that I normally trade with that will probably be interested in that Larkin and the last card is a Barry or excuse me is a Tony Gwynn benchmarks die cut and uh, which is a, another PC of mine but uh, nice card. Uh, just realized black marker on there on the sleeve. But yeah, uh, I do like that Panini is is trying some different things now. Um, I know they're not going to win everybody over, but uh, I like what they're doing. So that's about it, guys. Um, I'm going to get back to working here, trying to get get some. Uh, some of this mess cleaned up and and then uh tomorrow night um if you are a regular on my channel tomorrow night we are uh doing our next break and uh, it'll be happening around nine o'clock um eastern and we'll be breaking a box of 1996 leaf preferred looking forward to this it's the first year this set was made one steel card in every pack, um, which those are cool. They're really cool. So we'll be doing that tomorrow night. So if this is the first time you've ever stopped by my channel, I do have cheap breaks that I try to do, you know, at least a couple boxes a, a month. Um, I should probably put my Facebook group up here, um, but if you're on Facebook, you can search out Cardboard Collections. I do have a page for my blog, and there is also a Cardboard Collections group where I post all the break stuff. Um, I will also post break stuff on my blog as well as Twitter. And then again, if you're on Trading Card Database, look me up. I'm uh, Flywheels, just like I am here. 
and uh, we will. Uh, I'll be more than happy to to, uh, to trade with you, help you out. Um, like I said, um, I've been actively doing it. I've I just sent out about 15 trades between last night and this morning, and uh, and that goes and that adds to the five or six that I already had out going. So I've got a whole lot of things going on right now, but uh, appreciate your time stopping by, and we will catch you on the next video.